Hi everyone, my name is Marinx Pasuit. In this video, I will talk about creating a Windows service in .NET. We may want to create long running background services in .NET in specific scenarios. For instance, we might want to perform some processor intensive tasks, use some operations in the background, or schedule some operations to execute later on. For all these purposes, we can use the background service class in .NET, which implements the iHosted service interface. You will see how to do that here. As usual, if you like the video, please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons. It helps me a lot and supports the channel as well. Now, let's continue with this topic. For creating background services, you can use the worker service template that is available with both the .NET CLI and Visual Studio. Worker service allows for running background services through the use of a hosted service. While creating a new project in Visual Studio, you can choose the worker service template. On the other hand, if you are using the .NET CLI commands, you can use the .NET new command and specify the project type as worker. Both these approaches will create a new project using the worker service template. I already have the initial project created, so let's examine the files from it. Just before I do that, I would like to let you know about our products. Currently, we have the Ultimate ASP.NET Core Web API book and the Blazor WebAssembly course you can use to create client C-sharp apps without using JavaScript. Of course, we are working on new ones, so always check the links in the description below. Ok, let's continue. A project we create using the worker service template consists of two files. The program class and the worker class. The program class contains the code to add the worker service as a hosted service and run it. As you can see, the add hosted service method will add an iHosted service registration with a given type. In this case, the worker type. Here, the worker class contains the code for the service and it inherits from the background service class, which in turn implements the iHosted service interface. So, to implement long running services, we can create a class inheriting from the background service abstract class. Along with that, we have to provide an implementation for the execute async method, which runs when the service starts. While implementing the execute async method, it should return a task that represents the lifetime of a long running operation. There is also an option to create our custom background service class by implementing the iHosted service interface if we wish to have more control over the background service functionality. As you can see here, the iLogger service is injected into the worker class for login support. Additionally, there is a mentioned execute async method which runs when the service starts. The default implementation of this method in the project template runs a loop every second, logging the current date and time. Now, to have the support to host our application as a Windows service, first I need to install the Microsoft Extensions Hosting Windows Service Nugget Package. After that, I need to modify the program class. I will call the Add Windows Service Extension method, which configures the application to work as a Windows service. For the configuration, I will simply set the service name to code may service. Additionally, to be able to log with event logs, I will use the logger provider options class and call the register provider options method with two generic type parameters. Event log settings and the event log logger provider. I also have to pass the service collection as the argument to this method. Now, let's slightly modify the execute async method of the worker class to customize the log message. I will simply log a different information here with the code maze service running message. Along with that, I will change the logging interval to 30 seconds. Great. By default, the Windows service will write logs into the application event log and we can use the event viewer tool to inspect those. Also, by default, a Windows service will write only logs of the warning level and above into the event log. 
That said, we can change this behavior in the app settings file. I will add a new section for the event log here. And let's use the log level property to change the default log level to information. Now the service will log the information level logs as well. With all of these prepared, our Windows service project is ready. The next step is publishing the app. For publishing this application, we can right click the project in the Solution Explorer and then click on the Publish option. For this example, I will choose to publish our app to a local folder. And I will choose the service folder inside the C drive. This will create a published profile and I can provide the following settings. For the configuration setting, I can choose release any CPU. I will also choose the appropriate .NET version for the target framework settings. In this case, .NET 8. From a portability standpoint, it's better to choose deployment mode as a self-contained. I will also choose the appropriate target runtime. In this example, since I'm using a 64-bit Windows system, I can choose Win X64. The target location is already set. And now, in the File Publish options, I will check a few checkboxes. First, the Produce Single File to produce the output combined into a single file and the Enable Ready to Run compilation to produce the output in a ready to run format. With these settings prepared, I can publish the project by clicking the Publish button. After a few moments, this will produce a standalone executable output of the service in the specified folder location. Ok, to create a Windows service, I can use the Windows Service Control Manager SE.exe tool. The Service Control Manager operations require higher permissions as we are working directly with the operating system. And hence, we need to run the commands in the command window or a PowerShell with the administrator privileges. So, let's use the sc.exe create command and provide the service name, which is the code maze service, and the path as arguments. The path should point to the service executable inside the folder I use for publishing my worker service. Once the command executes successfully, it will create a new Windows service with the name code maze service and return this output. We can verify the newly created service in the Windows Service Management Console. By default, the service is in the stop state and we will have to start it manually by using the sc.exe start command and provide the name of the service. After this command executes successfully, it will provide an output that you can see in the console window. This will start the Windows service and it will continue to run in the background. Now, I'm going to verify that the Windows service works as expected. For that, let's open the event viewer. Remember that we implemented the service to write a log once every 30 seconds. So, within the event viewer, we can find logs in Windows Logs application node. We are going to see a bunch of events related to our service there. As soon as the service starts, the Windows Service Manager logs an event with the source as the service name. The first event with the source name code maze service corresponds to that. We can verify this by inspecting the general tab below, which will contain the corresponding message and the details. Apart from that, while the service is running, it logs an event every 30 seconds with the source matching the app's namespace. All the subsequent events with the source name code maze worker service correspond to those. Great, we have verified that the Windows service works as expected. Once we create a Windows service, it keeps on running in the background. But to remove a Windows service from the system, we have to first stop it and then delete it. To stop a Windows service, we can use the scexe stop command with the name of the service. This will stop the service and provide a detailed response. Even though this will stop the service, we can still find the service in the service console. 
This is very useful when we just need to stop the service temporarily and may want to start it later. On the other hand, if we no longer need the service, we can delete it using the scexe delete command. This will remove the service from the system. Great! You saw how to use the worker service template in .NET to create a Windows service that runs in the background. Additionally, you've seen how to work with the service and manage its state. As I said at the beginning of this video, if you like this one, please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons and the bell button to receive notifications of my future videos. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for new ones to come. Until then, all the best.